Hello, friends. Uh, this is Milton Knight again, uh, watching with you a Heckle and Jekyll called Steeple Jacks, 1951, directed by Connie Rosinski. And we uh, have all our favorite Terry Toons animators, like uh, Connie Rosinski here, his drawing of the dogs with their splayed hands, fingers. And uh, look at the uh, the backgrounds. They have uh, shadows of uh, the works on the uh, the uh, wall here. And we have Paul Summer with uh, his cuter versions of these characters. Worked in uh, West Coast Studios as well and kind of had that Disney magic going. You've got the, uh, the moving props. Uh, and we have... Uh, Paul Summer, and now coming up with the establishment of the tough bulldog is uh, Reuben Timmons. Now uh, we go to Jim Tyre. Jim Tyre, uh, refreshingly himself. I mean, who else? But that's a little gross. That's a little anti-Disney there. I better cut this out. I may get to like it. And notice that uh, Tyre, when appropriate, he will have the characters move at different exposures, sometimes threes, ones. We've got the uh, Terry Toons chase, the polka-like chase music. Still more uh, Jim Tyre here. This a bit might have been more effective if they had allowed the music to stop, just be silent while the hammers were happening. But of course, Phil Scheib was beholden to Terry to give him his money's worth as far as the orchestra was concerned. Just not let it stop. But they do have twinkly feet. Animator, I'm not sure, but he's familiar to me. He has that uh, Terry Toon's credo of the uh, very extreme squash and stretch. Characters just totally unstable. Moving along with the elevator here. And uh, now we switch to Connie Rosinski with his kind of impish Bill Teitler education here. His style was, uh, I guess, less graceful than uh, Teitler's, but uh, the same sort of uh, broad poses, the same sort of, uh, you know, distorted movements. And now we uh, switch to Reuben Timmons. And uh, notice that the, uh, the trumpet doesn't uh, sink exactly to taps. Very broad. We can look at the background. Such a wonderful uh, fade. Uh, these are uh, watercolor backgrounds, and the uh, Terry artists, the background artists, were wonderful at suggesting depth. One person said they were too good for the cartoons themselves. Now we've got uh, Reuben Timmons. Little uh, background moving in perspective, still Reuben Timmons. Rather simple approach, but... Uh, striking it stands out now this animator i'm not sure who he is notice that uh, the height of the girders don't seem to matter to these characters the uh, height is not playing plate for suspense at all now, more uh, shy circus type music terry was uh, very fond look at that background terry was very fond of the circus and uh, the music the uh, sound effects we're hearing a little of uh, Chopin's waltz, uh, brilliant waltz, Opus 18. Uh, we, we are on uh, Carlo Vinci at this point, you know, being uh, his wonderful self. That may be a little, uh, uh, that little jitter there might have been a little uh, double exposure. Now we've got this laugh, and this laugh was part of some sort of music library. It turns up again in a dubbed version of... Uh, Fantastic Planet, made many years later. I have a video on uh, my other channel comparing the two. Again, fade backgrounds, blurred in the background, or 
subtle type stuff. And and now we, uh, Paul Summer, we have another uh, Terry trademark, a very old fashioned trademark of basically having a uh, um, an object move as if it was uh, a character itself, doing little an uh, antics and. Uh, yeah, like that, uh, squishing and squashing around. This is not made of steel, but it uh, it reads as what it is, a cement mixer gone wild, its own life. Again, the look at the, the skyline there, and the, uh, the statue moves along with the char character, antics, shrinks and uh, stretches as it explodes. Now we have an ending, which, uh, don't think about it too hard. But, uh, uh Jim Tyre. And, uh, he's a tailor-made for this, uh, funny ending. I wonder if it's the first, uh, movie with a, a frisbee. Funny fade-out. I like it. Thank you.